Hey, how's it going? My name is Matthew, aka EasyBot. Welcome to another live stream. Today I have Nick Bigelow, aka DJ Weak Acid, here in the studio. Nick's brought his whole modular setup. This is what he uses to play live shows. So just a little bit about Nick, and then I'm going to let him take over and talk to me about his modular synth techniques, working with the hat packs. Nick uh, has always been my go-to when it comes to modular synthesis. If I have a question about how something functions on a pretty high level, Nick's really great at answering those questions. He's uh, the director of retail at Patchworks, a big synthesizer shop here in Seattle, also where I do video production. And uh, he's great at this. He does great live shows, and he's going to talk to us about how he sets up his Eurorack system for a live show. Techniques, uh, sound design, uh, using external sequencers with his modular, the whole shebang. So without further ado, I'll let Nick... Uh, take over here and we'll just start asking them questions. If you have questions, hit hit the chat. Cool, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the system here. Oh, beautiful. So all of this, when I came over to Matt's today, wasn't patched up, so we just patched it up within the last half hour or so. But it's a pretty typical setup that I do. The only thing that I usually am using when I do live stuff is the Hydronium for the bass, so we'll substitute right. that with something else. But you can get the Hydronium in a Eurorack module. Yeah, exactly. Though you opted not to. I opted not to. It's kind of big. I kind of wish that I would have it in the case because, you know, honestly, when you're like, hey, Nick, can you help out with the stream? Packing two cases up in the hat packs really isn't that hard. It's like the Hydronium. I also have an analog heat that I like to use to thicken up the sound, but for the most part, it is just the hat packs and the modular. And this is, yeah, I just have the two cases here. Um, yeah, but usually when I when I go through and do this, before I used a bunch of different sequencers, I used to use the Metron. We're both a big fan of the Metron. Yeah. Um, again, the only reason I took it out of the case is I just wanted more in the case, which you'll see here, there are certain things that I'm not actually utilizing. So we could talk about why modular is hard, why we put too much in our case and we don't even use those things. But, yeah, um... yeah, yeah. That is actually something <laughs> we, we will definitely talk about. <laughs> but... Uh, I took out the, ha uh, the the Metron, so I had the Metron and the Black Sequencer, and I still love them. There's no reason why I got them out of the case besides real estate. And then also the Hat Packs just allows me to kind of have everything more synchronized. And honestly, it's been like sort of a godsend. I really love yeah. the Hat Packs. I like the Hat... I picked up the Square Permod. Yeah. And I put that... I mean, you, you can't see it on stream, but behind me is a similar setup to Nick's. We both have two 7U cases, and I have the Hermod in my case. Um, which is like the really tiny version of what Nick's using. It does a lot less, but it has more CV and gate built into it. Yeah, it does. Um, it does quite a bit, but it's not as robust. No, it's not as robust. I mean, this is definitely, um, I would, I don't like, I kind of want to say it's a MIDI sequencer first and foremost, but that's not necessarily true. And out the back, we still have four CV and gates. And how many does the, the, it has eight gates and eight CV. Yeah. And it's not like they're coming out with an expander. Like it says on the back of the module expand. They yeah. haven't talked about it. Yeah. But like if they don't come out with it soon, yeah, it's going to be a problem because it really needs more CV. Yeah. That's always, it's funny too. Cause I work, um, been playing around with the pyramid, which, I overlooked and then playing around with them like this thing's actually pretty dope. Yeah. It's just that, you know, we Matt's the electron god and like the electron workflow takes us so long to learn. And then going over to another company's workflow, like we kind of don't appreciate how hard it could be to kind of take yeah, in yeah, yeah. how they actually learn or how they want to structure this stuff for us to learn. So like once I kind of understand how Squarp does their layout of stuff the weirdest thing is they always have the we can switch over to that <laughs> yeah number the... two yeah number two here we go boop yeah so here's the hat packs and i'll just go through the hat packs and talk about how i actually lay this out here but one of the weirdest things is they have the button it just says second and that's our shift button i don't know i've never known anybody to call it the second button it's just <laughs> whatever it makes sense secondary guess, function I secondary guess. function but you know when you look through the things you're always just like because it doesn't jump out at me like a shift button jumps out at me i also am playing around with like the poly tracker now and that is another workflow but this is so deep 
you know, again, especially we might go into some of this stuff because it's really fun, but the effects for generating sequences is really, really cool. Yeah. I haven't really even played around with the fact that you can route CV into here. So like, even though I use things like Marvel. Oh, like have this affect your sequencer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't even begun to broach that because again, like <laughs> sort of, I like to, pa I, I mean, I can't get away from modular. It's just too much fun to patch right. on the on the surface of these things. So even though the music, when I play around with it, it's just like, well, why am I not using XYZ hardware right. and it's like I want to patch. I like the idea that like even though I do the same patches over and over again, I like the idea that everything's pretty um free flowing. Like if I want to change something at the drop of the hat, because I even thought, what if I just didn't bring the hat pack today? Could we still make music? And the answer is yes, we could For easily sure. make music. We would have had to switch out some modules. We would have maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe oh, yeah. we could have done some crazy cool stuff. Yeah, but with, uh like marbles and with marbles, maybe and... even slowing down. I mean we have um Oh, yeah. We have the Maestro, and the Maestro is actually been yeah, sort of my uh, clock divider. I've been using a lot for weird clock division type stuff, okay, you know? Cool. Um, but anyway, so the hat packs is really nice. The way that I have it set up is that I have two cables going out the back here, sending my start and stop and my reset to my modular, because then I have things like, again, the Maestro, which I want to clock, and yeah. it's fun to clock the mimeophone and the clock, uh, other random sample holes, you know, marbles, etc. So um, these are just clocks. No, I'm not really sending CV. I think in our demo that we did for Patchworks, I showed drawing modulation with that. And that is also very cool. But again, like at the drop of the hat, sometimes it's just not as fun to patch back here. It'd be kind of cool if they made an expander where, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or if they made a module. Yeah, like that, the. Like, not like the Hermod. No, I, I know, but like the Oxy does that, doesn't it? Yeah, they yeah. do. They use an HDMI cable, which yeah. is different. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I, I I think that that would kind of make me play around with that a little bit more. But again, there's. So there's actually like on that topic of like, it's almost like, I don't, I don't want to talk about consumerism, mm -hmm. but there is something about like people just adding so many features yeah. to pieces of kit yeah. that like you're happy that they're there but you never use them yeah all the time you know what i mean like yeah. especially like we're talking cv into your hat packs like when are you going to do that unless your job is i'm a modular synthesist yeah you know, when are you going to find the time to route back in yeah i don't know and i've thought about this a lot too because like i make when i'm dj weak acid i'm making more like sort of acid techno so i what I'm doing is I kind of just want the ideas to keep on flowing when I'm producing Yeah. versus like somebody who's doing sound design may just hit play once and the interaction between their modular system and their sequencer is sort of like a one shot sort of captured thing. Like yeah. that could be very cool. Again, yeah, you're right. There's like a billion different uses for everything. I know it overwhelms people. I mean, even coming here, I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I have all this stuff, but you know, I'm and people would consider me to be like, oh, pretty knowledgeable on this stuff, but I'm by no means the expert on any of these modules. Well, you can't, like, that's Nobody just not how it works. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to somebody uh, yesterday when I was doing an Octatrack lesson, or no, an M8, it was an M8 lesson, and we were talking about FM synthesis, and yeah. I was like, I'll show you how to use the FM synth. Yeah. But I was like, but I don't have every algorithm and ratio memorized. No. Like, I can't, yeah. you can't do that. No. It's not feasible, but we still need room to play, and that's where yeah. sound design's fun. Yeah, yeah. If you knew, it's not even sound design anymore. It's yeah. more like just repeat oh, totally. recipe. Oh, right? totally. Yeah, and that's what we'll do today, too. Like, um, I have kind of the bass patch set up, but I don't know where it's going to go. So I'll work with you, people in the chat, to see what we want to explore, yeah. see what kind of weird sound design madness we could get ourselves into, you know? You can see the chat, right? Yeah, yeah, I can see the chat. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, yeah, the crate is really cool, uh, Toby. Like, I, I, I've played around with it a bit. It's one that I wish that I played around with more because... You can use it to draw automation, which is really awesome, you know? Um, so I haven't really dug into that so much, but maybe maybe we'll try to do that a little bit. Because again, like we'll, we'll explore those techniques that I like to use to take something that's very repetitive and make it not so repetitive, find those touch points to expand it more out to a song, pull it back in, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, that brings up a really great topic. And I think this is a great place for us to like really dive in Yeah, is when you're doing a modular set, so for yeah. instance, we're gonna make we're gonna draw comparisons to Electron workflow a lot yeah. because that's what I do, and we're, yeah. we're on the EasyBot show. Basically. Yes, <laughs> uh, but um, so for me, I like I'll write a track out mm -hmm. as you know, and I I can I can re-perform the yeah. same track. I mean, I can improvise it and do whatever I can do. Yeah. With the limitations that come with working in a box. There's a lot less limitations in modular. Yeah, but there's a limitation on repeat. 
Yeah. Like to repeat a set yeah, is yeah, not yeah. easy. You'd have to leave it patched. Like, yep. what is, what do you do about that? What's yeah. your approach? The approach is to freewheel it a little bit. Well, the hat packs has helped out a lot because again, we're on this kind of, um, this is the pattern page and, and I've got it down to where it's just like, before I used to put all my drums on one track, but this is like my my, my kick, my snare, my hi-hat, my secondary kick, etc. So that kind of like, you know, in Electron world, we use a lot of mute, unmute in order to drive a song. Like you don't just hit play and walk away. You still have to drive the song. Oh, for sure. Um, so that's where that goes. The patching, um, I mean, I one thing that I, I used to kind of minimize unpatching is this Octolink by, um, is that what they call it? I think they might call it the Octolink. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Dopefer has theirs, they call the, it... The Cat5 cables? Yeah, they call it something else that's really goofy. But um, the Octolink's really nice because it does allow me to bus at least eight signals between the two cases. Um, so I don't have to unpatch. So when I show up, I try to keep that minimal. Like when I first started this, I literally would just... I call it the karate chop method. I would take my hand, anything that catches, I would pull that cable and write down what went to what. Okay. And and patching, unpatching was such a pain in the ass like yeah, it was yeah. it wasn't fun but it was about the idea of repeatability but again like with the modular like even though this is drive my pattern changes i don't really get my modulation from the hat packs something that you can do again we can draw automation uh my mutant brain has more cv out so i could use to pass that automation out so like if i really wanted to you know high pass this sample but for me i just have to feel it and that's the right. best part about trying to make modular like improvised music is, so yeah. if there was like the answer to the question, so like the stream title is called How to Live Modular. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I would say like, we're kind of answering that question, like, or we're teetering on the answer to that question a yep. little bit, which is, it's a million, it's yeah. a million answers. Yeah. But, but part of the answer to the question so far is improvise. Yeah. A yes. lot of improvise. Yeah, yeah, Improvisation. Yeah. Totally. A lot of improvisation. I mean, there's other basic things that, you know, again, the Electron workflow is really great and I love my Electron boxes, but, you know, for me, when I'm playing modular, like the most important points are my my filter cutoffs. It's just like hiding things behind filters, uh, playing with my envelope generators. You know, over here I have the Quadrax and, you know, playing that and just changing those up. Like it just sonically changes so much. And that's what I'm aiming for is something that hopefully changes sonically. A lot of the too is just modulating my decay of my kicks, you know. So it's yeah. like a lot of my stuff isn't going to be super sample based. I may have modules that are are sample based but have controls that change yeah like the assimilator is not really patched up i don't know if yeah. folks can see this this is the assimilator these yeah. things are yeah uh, these things are amazing yeah 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 <laughs> the assimilator is awesome um i mean now my new live sets i actually am using a lot more of the assimilator i'm like break beats and... yeah break beats i'm using some like old like uh brazilian jazz and tropicalia uh Grand Turismo music. These are all copyrighted things. I don't want your thing to get a copyright strike. That's so, fine. It's fine. Um, but it's been great. And again, even then, I'm hiding that stuff behind filters and all the right. all the stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, a lot of it is just you know. Sometimes I will sit there and just be like, okay, it's ten minutes in. I know I should be moving, moving to this part. And even when I'm doing sample based stuff, it's easy for me to be like, each sample needs to play out. So I have five different samples. Versus when I wasn't doing sample based stuff, it's just like, okay. Kind of just like, I'll fill these up full of patterns and just try to see how much I can milk out of those patterns, you know? Yeah, because that's kind of like, that's kind of where I'm getting is like, yeah. what do you do when it's time to go to song two? I yeah. suppose we'll get to that yeah. after we start totally. hearing some sounds. Yep. We have some stuff patched up. Can yep. we? Yeah, exactly. We so sound we got some taste? stuff patched up here. And on the hat packs, the way that I usually use this, um, hat packs is funny because like the mute, this is my critique of the hat packs, I guess, but the mute functionality isn't so easy. Um, and so the way I get around that is I just keep an empty pattern. So if I hit play right now, nothing happens, but my clocks are ticking. You can see over here that things are, are yeah. moving. Channel one is just going to be my ultra kick. Um, so if I just hit this, we'll hear that come through. Um, and so it's a very, let's just do four on a floor. So ultra kick, I love the ultra kick because it just sounds, it could just sound huge, you know? And there's a lot of variants you could do on it, but I like it because it really, really thwaps, you know? It does. Um, so that's the ultra kick, um, back over to the pattern, our snare, very simple. It's just coming from uh, peaks up here. So. Very, very easy. Um, not even modulating for it. Snares, yeah. usually I don't play around with too much in terms of sound design. Typically I would be using plats, but again, 
we don't have a lot of sound sources because I don't, I'm not using the Hydronium, so we're just using Peak. Uh, for three, we have our hi-hats on our plats. I love plats for every single reason that- For every reason. <laughs> for every reason that there ever could be. And again, like, I don't know what other sort of drum machine, besides like a dedicated drum machine with tons of, um, tons of knobs like a 808, 909, that has all these things kind of out and about for you to play around with. So it, like, just being able to, the very stuff like that, like keeps things just sounding pretty interesting, you know? Yeah, the kind of like with a bonus of like, modular or, or working in a synthesis based workflow, especially with like percussion yep. and stuff is that, every knob does adjust the sound. Whereas like in a sample based workflow, that's yeah. not the case. And only exactly. a few adjustments are even usable. Yeah, Right. exactly. Yeah, you don't want to be pitching everything too much, you know? Yeah, you don't want to like repitch your hi-hats or repitch your kick. Yeah. Maybe that might sound like garbage. Exactly, or yeah. play it in reverse. Like why? Yeah, you know, reverse <laughs> kicks do not sound good. Yeah. It's, I mean, they can. They can. In a moment, but not regularly. regularly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then again, making dance music, we like that low end a lot. So we got the low end from the Ultra Kick and then also the Bacillus. I just think they kind of have different qualities, you know? So this is, we'll, we'll move that Ultra Kick. The, B the Bacillus has a lot. Kick up to the, to the front. Yeah, yeah, it has much more, many more harmonics. Like I haven't even really, the Bacillus is discontinued and I really like it for a techno kick, it's awesome. I've tried it, like the knobs are a little finicky, you know, like if I play around with this morph, like way too many harmonics. Yeah, there's just... like, there's like sweet spots for yeah. clean sounds, but the rest is dirty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so Bacillus and Ultra Kick. So this Ultra Kick is all- I do like the Ultra Kick. Yeah, and it's nice because it's just like, you get two different qualities of kicks. Yeah. You got one that's like, this one's like smooth, um, full, very full bodied. And then the Basilmus is sort of kind of in your face, you know? You could hear it has that, kind of has more of a growl to it, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you could get a like you could throw a bass and, or some like reverb and delay on that and get a nice rumble. Yep. And one thing that you're kind of might be noticing now too is that I'm actually uh, in my process chain. Um, let's move over to this other camera. But um, yeah, you can't really even see it. But my ultra kick is being multiplied out to my uh, my muscle, which is my compressor. So it is introducing that ducking for sort of compression. Because again, like when I'm making music, it is just the rack, and I'm just hoping that I could push the rack in a way that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the muscle really helps out with it. It's a weird compressor. I don't think anybody actually loves the muscle. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I go in, like, I'll take it. I'll have it be like my master compressor. Yeah. And then I take it out. Yeah. I'll be like, I'm gonna use it on bass lines. And then I take it out, I put it in. It's just that it's designed for line level and modular level. Yeah. And because of that, the settings don't, like you forget yeah. where the settings are for the, both. The, I don't know, unless you're using it all the time. They could be very finicky, yeah. Um, so anyway, so that's just like, you know, while we're playing, yeah. <laughs> Again, it's just a nice beat, and with the with the hat packs, it's super easy. Because again, like I like to have my stuff sort of be a mesh between um, like acid techno, and I really love like '80s electro. So like it's easy to well, one, it's easy to copy stuff. So I wanted to copy that and then paste it over here. I could jump over to this pattern. So this is my kick, and it didn't change. But now I could go into my step editing mode, and let's see. So it was okay. like pretty easy. And now, so even you if I- this on the fly. On the fly, exactly. Okay. And um, and now, and everything is separated kind of out nicely, which is something that I kind of miss from Electron stuff. Cause Electron stuff, you don't get pattern independence, you know? Right. So if I wanted to, again, like, and I just do this so it doesn't stop, but I copy a pattern. So I copy my hi-hat pattern, I'll paste it. I go over to step and let's just make this a pattern. Let's see here, oops. Oh, that's up here. Okay. So oh, that's and, cool. yeah. So right now I'm not playing the first two of the of the bar right now. So now okay. I'm kind of getting into polymetric stuff, which is really fun, you know. Um, and it's really easy to do that uh, to you know reset that. Let's see here. So we could redo that, and now we could just do. Oh, this is actually we're messing around with my kick, so I could do that with my hi hats as well. That's cool. Oops, 
access them. And usually what I'll do, so one of the first things I'll do here, I'm gonna stop this for a second, but my hi-hats, when I'm performing live, and this is why I like to have the modular going like this, but I want to have an effect on that hi-hat. Because yeah, when again, like this is improvisational. Like when I'm playing, I just, I don't want to stop ever, <laughs> which is yeah, not, yeah, yeah. which is actually like, not. No, like it's like the unspoken rule of electronic music. Yeah. Like we don't have silence. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. kind of like, I base my whole workflow on that. Yeah. Yeah. No silence. Exactly. And that's, I mean, your workflow does that naturally because the system is just like, it doesn't shut up. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? like yeah, yeah, yeah. It just wouldn't work that way. Totally. I mean, really, one of the first, when I first got into modular, like, I didn't have a clock that could stop. So literally, you'd boot it up and it just starts playing music. And it's just, you know, it's an addicting quality about this. So as much as I could keep it in there, I just try, you know. Yeah. So so one thing, you know, I didn't really, we'll see how this sounds, but like, uh, run it through the FX aid. I don't know if this is a delay or reverb that I have programmed here, but we'll you, see. whoever knows with FX aid. Yeah. <laughs> You can never know, but they do sound really good. Every yeah. Time. Yeah. So it's a it's a delay, and I like it because this is like a high pass, low pass. This is hopefully my feedback amount. So it's just awesome, man. I, I again, I'll, we're stopping it because we're having a conversation. Right. And if I don't stop it, I won't talk to you, and I'll just be my own. I world. mean, I don't mind. If you, <laughs> I don't mind if you flow into the music. Stuff. I, I would actually like you to do that at some point here. Yeah. Advantage. Um. And now the seem it's resonating, which. Oh, yeah, cool. Nice. Oh, it actually sounded good, too. It actually did sound pretty good. Usually <laughs> when delays, because again, no shade on any of the tip top stuff, but I just can't get the feedback in the way that I want to. Yeah. And and we'll play around with some of the weirder sound design stuff, because I have right now this is sort of where I'm, we're in the sensible world down here. Everything makes sense down here. And this is a dream world where <laughs> just further get deeper in. You don't know what the heck's going on. That's um, a good way of thinking about it. It's like, yeah. this is like I don't need to use this stuff. Maybe yeah. is that kind of what you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, again, this is very economical down here. Here. Like again, we talked about what we're using, and let's just go down. We're already using the uh, mutant brain, makes sense. Ultra kick makes sense. Basilisk makes sense. Plats makes sense. Secondary plats two for plats. two plats. I would have five plats in there if it was my choice. Um, <laughs> but the modular society will ban me if yeah, I no, no, you will be banned. Uh, no, burned. I, I think that people used to be pretty uh, funny when I was like, I have two plats, or I would have two of everything. I had two plats, two maths. Again, I just, I want to have the setup that makes sense to me. So let's, really quick, like, yep. let me just cut you into a little subsection of what we're chatting about. Yep. You just mentioned all these economical items. Yeah. I think what makes them economical, I think we all agree on this, yeah. is because all you have to do is plug in a CV, a trigger, and an output. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's it, right? That's yeah. what you mean by economical? That's what I mean by economical. Okay. I mean, yeah, exactly. And that it just, yeah, it doesn't need anything so they're extra. Full, they're full synthesizers. Full synthesizers. Plats all still gate out. So like the hi-hat, there's no reason to gate it out. It's a percussive sound. Like if, unless you're making your own hi-hat, I wouldn't use it with a VCA. Right. Um, with the other plats being in the the main subtractive mode, I am using it because I want, uh, using it as a drone oscillator yeah. or a droning oscillator because I want to be able to use envelopes. I want to use my own filter. So, you know, like I wish, I mean, maybe after later might mod it to allow you to have a knob that plays around with that internal envelope. It'd be a lot of fun. That would be cool. But um, but yeah, I don't like to do the button combos while I'm performing. That just gives me too much anxiety. I don't either. Yeah, yep. one knob per function is yeah. <laughs> best for live. Yeah, and then the other part of economical, like we have our uh, Happy Nerding FX A, which again, like, Everybody talked about how good it is. It's pretty dang good, it but is. you don't know what the hell is going on you with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it all sounds good, but you're like going through the modes, you're like, okay, yeah. is this the three tap delay with the chorus and flanger, or is this the yeah. uh, anyway? Well, sp to speak on that really quick, yeah. somebody told me, I think it might have been Alex mm -hmm. or uh, Hauser. Yeah. I think it might have been him. Yeah. I'm not sure. But uh, to remove all the effects that you don't use, yeah. and then just have a few effects on there so it's easier. Yeah. Because right sense. now there's like 30. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's still <laughs> Yes. Uh, Debbie's saying that there is an alternative platform where it lets you do that. And of course there is because uh, Mutable is open source, which is amazing. It's still one of the rare goodnesses about the modular world just because it, it was, she was both a very successful module maker and people have learned so much from those open source designs. Yeah, what would we do without Mutable? Like, where would we be? I no, feel like yeah. the Eurorack Euro world would be like so much smaller. So yeah. many companies wouldn't have gotten a start. Because yeah. a, a ton of companies, not just after later, yeah. based their whole ecosystem off of 
the free firmware. Yeah. They they got from Mutable. Yeah, and their hardware designs like their hardware, uh, yeah. like with uh, Raya Media. I know that um, uh, Chris did use a lot of um, like the 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 schematics as reference, yeah. and like I know the same thing with like Acid Rain was the ones who were suggesting some of those things. So it's like oh yeah yeah so well, really that. yeah cool. yeah. So I mean again like and I I've learned about module design because I know that the Daisy has taken a lot from the the mutable schematics. So oh, anyway, so it's sad when, you know, she leaves the game, but awesome that, you know, she was so cool about all that stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um anyway, tangent over. Uh dope for this is an SEM filter, so it's like an Oberheim style filter. We can switch to that shot if you want to talk about these modules. We can go yep, to number yep. two and yep, I can actually go. uh oh I, this I, I, uh, what happened there where oh. I completely killed it. There we go. Yeah, uh, sorry We're guys. Back. We're back. Yeah, back, maybe. The, yeah, the da default Daisy library has so much mutable code. I mean, it's like the mutable code is almost like Doom. Like if you could get a microcontroller to run mutable code, then you have a good like audio processor to use in projects, and it's just awesome, you know. Um, yeah, but overhead camera style. -y. Um, Filters, like, again, like, we're talking about how do we perform live. So I set up my case 100% to perform live versus as a sound design, like, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same. Same here. Which is sometimes it's kind of disappointing, if I'm being honest. Like, yeah. Um, because I, oh, no. My shift shifter died. <laughs> I actually saw that yeah. happen live. Oh, I no. thought it, maybe it was a screensaver. I hope it didn't die. That would be super sad. Um... Anyway, uh, <laughs> well, we could flip it on and off. The nice thing about modular is most things will be saved. But anyway, uh, we'll get to that when we have to get to that. The um, SEM filter, Dofer makes great filters. So I just, you, you see my case and I have one, two, three, four filters in a case. And again, it's just because when I'm playing live, I just want to hide things behind filters. Like if it went in doubt, instead of putting a volume knob, filters always just sound better, you know? Right, and, and, right. and it is something that is very um, dynamic. You can modulate it really easily, you know. Versus... Removing a filter like versus volume is emotional. Yeah, I yeah, think. yeah, like, yeah, it, for sure. It invokes a different response from you. Like things being coming quieter feels like something's ending. Yeah. Whereas when it's filtered, it feels like something's changing. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I guess, especially when we've been playing around with electronic music, before we were into electronic music, I think we all had that idea where we're just like, when we played with a low pass filter, we're like, Oh, that's that sound from that song that I like. It sounds like I'm outside the club. You know, it sounds like you know. It, oh it, yeah, yeah. It's evocative of of time and place versus you know if you turn something down, there's no change. It's just kind of fades into the background. Right. So, so yeah. But yeah, it's just interesting to people. Interesting to me. Very fun. Uh, I sneak in little modules. So I have this uh, little attenuverter. Well, it's not even attenuverter. It's just a passive attenuator. Quadrax, just for envelopes. I haven't gone into any of the crazy. That's all I use it for. All. Yeah. I mean, it's billion... like it's a really nice quad envelope generator yeah. with snappy envelopes that fits in a good spot. Yeah. And here's like my little setup that I was telling you about before, where um, the kick from the ultra kick goes into my mixer, and then I mult it as the source side chain for the muscle. And that's being fed by two stereo mixers down here. So this is my oh. main mixing section here. Yeah. And so, you know, it actually works pretty well, you know. And then I and then this is my master output, essentially, is that I have um, my kick and then I have my sidechain sound source and anything that I don't want sidechain needs to be plugged in here. Okay. And I have yet one other mixer. Sometimes I do play around with just busting all my um, my percussion together. So then I have one knob that uh, controls the percussion. Okay. Yep. Crate, as Toby said, this is a cool module by ND. What, uh, what is it? It's cool, man. So it's like, um, right now it's in tempo sync LFO mode. You it's get like, what is the refresh rate on this? Like 60 or something? I don't know. It, it looks really It cute. looks really good. On camera, it, kind of, it looks a little, it doesn't look as good as it does in person, but it yeah, looks, it's, in person, it's liquid. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, you could either have like a tempo set, like a LFO, or you can draw in modulation. So, um, Let's just do this. Well, I'll just show you it in action. That's cool. Uh, if I want to change the decay of the hi hat um, dynamically, so if I hit play here, you're gonna see that this is gonna start moving. And if I hold down this button, so that's not the decay. That's maybe the, the quality. So you just drew that little modulation. Yeah. 
Oh, sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is cool. <laughs> yeah. You could use several of these. Yeah, 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 totally. You have, like a whole section of those. I wish, yeah, I wish that, I mean, they're they're only like, I think I got used for like two, two, 219 or something like, like that. zero sticker shock. Yeah, 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 exactly, 219, <laughs> and we're like, oh yeah, whatever. We're like, yo, okay, it's like a popsicle? Yeah, but <laughs> it is cool. Again, like you just touch the button and you could just draw your own automation, or you could have it be tempo sync LFOs, which is not, not really super um, important to me because I already have the Maestro. In fact, this shows how much I don't use this thing. This is I forget how to even go into. Well, oh. how can it, like how like that's what we we're talking about earlier is like. Yeah, how, how you're, could you're you? You're still gonna have to explore, yeah. like no matter what. Yeah. So anyway, and I do also just like the beat that we got there. I, I <laughs> that's kind of what I love about again just with modular or just dance music in general, like having that kick always on the like on a three like step pattern sounds so cool to me. Yeah, yeah, no, I like it <laughs> just, too, yeah. Yeah, but then that's where it's cool when I'm having that going, I could still have my main kick going to the cylinders. So you really get people freaking out, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the shapeshifter is dead. Again, uh, let's let's really hope that it isn't dead for real. <laughs> please, please, please. Um, yeah. I love it. I just got it, so we'll see. <laughs> Should it, we switch your patch to a different, well, um, different sound can, source? Can we cut the sound and I'll just switch it on and off and maybe it's just a power thing? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, I'll still talk about the shapeshifter while Matt's uh, cutting the sound so we don't get a big... It's cut. Okay, so I'm going to switch this off and on. So it's back on. Oh, nope, it is really not liking that. So we'll chill for one second. Anyway, Shapeshifter, if it works, is great. It is FPGA based when there weren't a lot of things that were doing things that were with FPGAs. So it's super high refresh rate and it's an oscillator that's a wavetable. So I wanted to, I'm used to playing around with things like the um, DPO and here, let's try it one more time. Oh, it works. Okay, let's hope it stays on. <laughs> um, I'm used to playing around with things like the DPO. I had the Trident, so I like a... Uh, I like a uh, really high, like, you know, it's FPGA, FPGA essentially will be the closest. Uh oh, it's really having a good bad time. So okay. we'll just, you know, roll with the punches. So we're just doing that in terms of. Um, well, this is something that can happen at like, be, OK, this is a good, actually a really great opportunity to discuss this particular topic. Mm -hmm. When you're playing with like groove boxes, yep. if one of your groove boxes goes, the show is toast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If one of your modules goes because it's all partitioned out, that's not the case. We yep. can switch over to a new sound source. Exactly. So, so like, well, this isn't the end of the world. You could even do this live. You could, exactly. And honestly, there have been times where there's so much going on that I have just like, I thought I was like turning knobs and like, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then you that. realize like, actually, I. Oh, very, that was very humble of you yeah. to share that. I mean, performing, <laughs> you don't know how, how, uh, not badly people perform, but it's just like, it's just a, yeah. like when you, when you don't have songs that you're playing and it's different, how could you, unless you practice like a full-time job, you know? Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, Shapeshifter, but we, cause we were making some cool sounds with it. I we love were. it. sounded so good. I love wave tables. This thing's really great with it. It has like wave folding. It has a delay. It has a, like a harmonizer built in. It has so much in there and you know, we'll figure out what the hell happened to it. Fracture, I just can't stop using the Fracture. It's not patched right now, but maybe we'll move over to it. But it's just, again, it's one of those sample based, just give it one trig and it makes something that sounds like it's not coming out of a modular yeah. system. Um, again, two filters, Polaris, Intelligel Polaris. A lot of people ditch their Polaris after a time. I think that that's, that's fine, you know? I'm not gonna judge them for doing that. I think it just has too many modes, and if you just settle with one mode, you'll learn well, You'll miss rip. your phaser when you get rid of it. And the phaser's awesome. Yeah. The phaser's incredible. And I don't know, again, it's just, I, I think that the the Polaris is amazing. System 8, now I think the 860 filter is amazing too. That's Yeah, a, this is one of the best sounding filters I've heard yeah. in a long time. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Two effects, tip top audio, echoes, and the Z5000. Um, this is all delays. This one has delay reverb and some pitch modulations with choruses and such. Carbon filter. That might actually be on the chopping block. Sorry, carbon filter. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's lasery. It's a little aggressive. I don't know. It is a little lasery. That's yeah. a good adjective for yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, I wanted it because it was a small filter. So, like, to dumb it down, like, because mm -hmm. all these modules, they're interchangeable with whatever. Yeah. It doesn't have to be 
Polaris or, yep. or 860. Yeah. It's, really, it's filter, filter, effect, effect. And yep. you're just loading up all these different filters and effects because you plan to use them uh, individually and you want to have a plethora of choices. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just want to have so many. Oh, Phaserville just said, did somebody say Phaser pew pew pew? So <laughs> that's a, a Phaser shout out. If yeah, keeping track at home. <laughs> uh, and, but anyway, so yeah, you're right. I want to have choices and I want to have good choices. Like yeah. I want to. I don't want a whole modular full of 2HP modules, which are these small ones. Um, I want to have good, solid modules. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that that that's the setup, and and we already went over that with the with the hat packs, and we went over all the voices there, you know, like. Yeah. And then on this other case, like you know, I guess we don't even have to really go into it. As we patch, we'll we'll start talking about more of that stuff. But, yeah, let's do. It. Let's get yeah. into it. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Let's start making some more sounds. Some more sounds. So anyway, so now with the hat packs, we have, and I'll switch over to the uh, this, this cam here. So three on. Cool. So again, we have we have two beats now. So we got the the kicks that are not really. I think eventually they may reset, and then we have our four on the floor. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we can like start on this groove or yeah. would you start on this groove or? I would start on this groove. Okay. Usually when I start, I just kind of just like to get, keep the kick going and then. Bring in even, like a bass line or something. Yeah, yeah. Even with that hi-hat, like I think that that's a little, that's already too, too flavorful for me because it there's variance there, right. you know? So copy, paste, we'll go here and we'll just, do I even want to, sure easy you know that's our basic beat and then and then usually i'll bring in the the snare okay and then usually what i'll do for the next part especially i don't know there's just like i don't i don't know where we get all of our like electronic music idioms from but the next thing i usually like to do is just like to have um i like to really dial the kick back and then add a Oh, and then bring that kick back in. Yeah. And we're getting, so, and here's the first thing too, is like we set up this modulation here. I'll stop it again. <laughs> um, we set up this modulation here, but one of the easiest tricks that I do is um, modulate the the decay of the hi hat over like a like a four or eight bar phrase, because then it just naturally opens that up. Because if we just hear this hi hat the whole time like that, it gets kind of tiresome, kind of drags on a little bit. So what I like to do is like with my um, maestro, it's really easy to do that. In fact, let's see what my channel my channel one's already set up like that here. So if you guys use the maestro, it's really easy to set it up where I say you know, one eighth slow ramp up, which means that like, I can't remember if that means like eight bars or whatever, but. Well, it's, I think it depends if you're in, if you're in slow mode, it'll be, I, think, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to yeah. speak out of one, turn on two, that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So it's just, it's two bars. Yeah, yeah. And it sounds good. Yep. Maybe we could make it even longer. And then the next thing I actually like to do is like, Let's see. I like that. That's cool. So when it when it, like it's, you wouldn't just start out doing this. We would have a melody. Yeah, we would. Probably. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Beforehand, even. Yeah. And so yeah, before we get here, so we hadn't gone over there in terms of the patterning, but ch channel nine is gonna be my my plats. So let's see how that sounds. And um, that's already too high. Pitch for me if I wanted to be a bass line. So the hat packs is really nice and easy. I can just hit all and turn this. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> and so the first thing I'll do too is like, didn't really prep the, the bass sound here. And usually I still like, even though I use like my hydronium, I actually like to have two like sources for kind of bases. Like the hydronium and acid bases are like a little bit more nasally than something that's like really like slow and smooth. So where is this coming through? That's going there, there, this, okay, so. 
but I'll still like uh, modulate that to have like a little bit of pulse width modulation sound, you know. And I can this even would drag sound it. so huge too, like yeah. you know, in a live setup. Yeah. Like on headphones, like it's always like music is cute on headphones, yeah. and then you go to a show and it's just like boom, especially modular, like it's like pulse no punches. You yeah. Know what I mean? Exactly. At this point, we yes. At this point, we could put in the Steely Dan sample. If Steely Dan's estate wouldn't come after us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mind. I'm not gonna. I don't need to monetize. No, this. no, you can no. Put in Steely Dan samples. We, we, if we get there, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so, so we got that kind of baseline going too. And it's sort of like another thing that's like easy for me to like want to do when I'm preparing is that we got that baseline there. Sometimes I'll just have tr simple transpositions of those. So copy that, paste, paste. So we'll have one that might go up to, um, let's see here. So let's bring that up to like an E flat. And then we can smooth back to the C. So it's really, really easy to like have that sort of sense of chord progression. Like even though I don't really make classic techno because I want to still have chord progression, I like to have things that are going to be more like, more like electro. Yeah, exactly. Electro, sometimes I, I sometimes think you go into the IDM. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. And, and and the sounds that we'll put on top will uh, <laughs> the sounds we'll put on top will uh, really start working that angle, you know. Yeah, with a lot of random. Yeah. Randomness, yep. which we'll get to. I'm assuming. Yes. You use, you use a lot of that. You have to. You have to. You have to. So that kick is thumping. I know. <laughs> if we were on headphones, this would be the room would be vibrating. I know, and that's what I liked about that the ultra kick, you know. That's got so much low end. Okay, so since our, our shapeshifter died, we have to find a way to get another synth voice. And so what I'm gonna do, like, we'll use a fracture instead of the assimilator. I, let me load a new. So on the my assimilator, I have the Adventure Kid um, oh, nice. waveforms. So we'll just use that and we'll have to tune it, but I'll be fine. Um, so Adventure Kid, if you guys don't know, has all these waveforms online and they are just amazing, mm -hmm. really great. I use them. Constantly. Yeah, for, exactly. For so, so he's like the most underpaid developer. Yeah. Or, or whatever he whatever he considers himself. Yeah. <laughs> so weird, but I think there's a weird thing because he likes to use like some weird tuning, right? <laughs> so oh, yeah, that's so true. I have to I have to tune it first. So let's get this going. Cause like so I, you always have do you Oh yeah. Is this like a requirement for you to have an oscilloscope in your system? Yeah, it is. Cuz I like I use a little zero scope, but I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm barely. It's mostly an aesthetic thing. No, I, I I I it's important for me to use an oscilloscope cuz one this one allows me to tune and tuning again if you're trying to do like complex generative melodic stuff, like you do want your stuff to be in tune cuz you don't want to have Okay. it to sound all so you think this is a must. This is a essential piece. For me, like it is, like before I had the data, I used like a chord tuner and I actually Save my, save my bones a few times. Yeah. Um, but to see uh, like modulation and especially to learn how to make complex modulation shapes, like one of the things that I was going to show, which I could still show after this, after we get this tuned up, is like, you know, we had that slow rise on the decay of the hi hat. But what if I wanted to have something that was like, because when you play like a hi hat, you're not just like even velocity on every yeah, hit. Yeah. You kind of want to have like. So you're trying hit. to emulate a real drummer. Kind of, sometimes, yeah. Okay. Like, it's just, you know, again, like, we come... Well, I come from the DAW world at first and in, no. in, in, in college and such. And so when I would program my drums, like, adding dynamics was how I kept it from being boring, you know? And so anything I could do to try to introduce that in my setup here would be great, you know? For sure. So, um... So yeah, definitely. And but then having an oscilloscope and knowing how the voltages sort of interact with each other. And even, like, before, you know... I'm just gonna keep on bringing up the shapeshifter, <laughs> but before, but like the shapeshifter in any wavetable synthesizer, I think it's important to actually like see the waves because then you understand the relation between wave shape and sound. Like a smooth waveform has no harmonics, but then it's like, well, you look at it and it's like, yeah, there are no kinks in this, and as soon as you add one kink, all of a sudden it becomes bright, and you can kind of imagine that the way the speaker moves is more sudden, which adds 
a lot more sound and a lot more harmonic yeah, content. Yeah, what I no, I love this analogy, and it reminds me of a, a similar one that I like to use too, which is like if you think of like a saw, like yeah. a physical saw, and it's yep. got the jagged shapes, yeah, and it goes rant, 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 rant when you're yeah. like sawing something. Yep. But if you flatten that saw, no. and it's got really smooth shapes. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's just gonna. It's just smoothly moving, and that is exactly the same in sense. Yeah, because yeah, I think that a lot of people do. And I think it's okay that people feel this way, but like oscilloscopes can be aesthetic, but they actually have so much utility because like, you know, the Korg monologue and Minilog and Prologue have that oscilloscope in it. And, and I, I tell people like, this is really useful because it teaches you a lot about synthesis. Like, oh, you could turn your triangle wave into a sine wave and you can just see it. And then until you understand how important that sine wave is and what a filter does, like, I think it's important to have one. Like, is it necessary? I don't know. I dedicate a whole, I don't know, 20 HP to it, but it's fine. Which this real estate is really important to you. Yeah, exactly. This is all you're working with. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I think the most important thing for me is the tuner for whatever reason. And I like uh, on the basement state compilation, I had a track on there. And I think I used the data as a clock source because it has like a clock generator on there too. So that song I made without the hat packs, it was just a jam and turned out really well. Again, like it's something that I could only accomplish with having um, a modular system versus like if I had an electron box, the electron box is inexplicably, or I guess very explicably <laughs> tied to the sequencer. Yeah. Modular is tied to nothing. Yeah. Anything could be anything. It's 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 a crazy world out there. You know? Yeah, yeah, and you love that part. And that's yeah. the part that I, I do don't it. love as much. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I yeah. like that idea and mm -hmm. this kind of goes back to like when I had like, I don't know if you saw Circo coming on here mm -hmm. and he uses a mixture of like external sequencers and modular and yeah. stuff. And he loves the idea of everything being untied. Yeah. Um, I like to like, you know, I, f I want to be able to repeat certain experiences in my live setup where I'm like, it's going to have this build up and yeah. it's going to hit this crescendo and it's going to, you know, take me to this pivotal, this pivotal moment in my music. Yeah. Whereas this doesn't lend itself to that. This no. is like your build up. You have to figure out how to craft it yes. live, right? Or yeah. you have like some go to techniques. You yeah, yeah, but you have to. It, it does. It will never. It will never be because there's a part of your system that like sort of ordains that particular thing. Like you have to construct your own methods to, for pushing those parts of the sound. You know. Right, right, right. And like again, up here I have. Um, yeah, if you can see a lot of my cases, it's like extra one you row is going to be um, like the uh, quadrat and uh, they're just attenuators. But I will make these like my macro knobs, you know, just but like, yeah, I do the same. Technique. Yeah, yeah. Just like on the Octatrack, just having a big um, uh, crossfader is going to be like really these are my crossfaders. So like, again, like one of the things I may do is that this will have my kick all the way open and my sample not high pass and this may crossfade to a different sample and cut the kick so then i have those buildups sort of here but again it's not this still needs to be molted patched yeah yeah, set yeah. just right this is still like well it's a cool technique it's a technique that i love and it's one of yeah. it's probably my favorite modular technique yeah but that comes to an important point for the for folks who don't understand what nick's talking about mm -hmm. is that this the quadrat right here has a static positive five volts yep maximum right yep so you can modulate something up to five volts yeah. just with the output without patching in. Yeah, and exactly. that's what's cool about it. There's and a couple other pieces. Do you have other pieces that do that? I like the 410. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little faders on it. Yeah, I mean, you see my little box, uh, the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that thing's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You can't even make that anymore, right? Because I don't, get, think, they, I don't I, think they I think, sell them. Oh, maybe they don't. We're talking about the uh, Acid Rain Technologies Navigator. I don't know if they sell it. They used to sell them as kits, but it's just a big fader with a knob and... Yeah, you could just do it's cool. Yeah. yeah, it's some it's some silly like modular. It can be pretty silly, etc. Um. Anyway, what were we talking? Oh, tuning. Sorry. So we talked all this good talk, and now I just need to tune my oscillator. <laughs> but this will be nice because you you will see how easy it is. My shapeshifter died again. I won't shut up about it. But um, you'll see how easy it is for me to just substitute it out right back into where it needed to be. Yeah. Like because we it was already patched up. It already had a purpose. So great commercial for the assimilator. Yeah, the assimilator doesn't <laughs> die on you when you're on a stream. Buy them from Patchworks. Buy them from Patchworks. We're going to have them in stock here soon. Uh, <laughs> actually, one last, it's not a plug, but I was just telling Matt. So the assimilator, one of the things that I'll do a lot with the assimilator is, you know, again, and here's a trick. Again, I, I don't know if anybody cares about this, but this MIDI, this mutant brain, 
what the hell? It has a MIDI port here, but it's... What the hell? What the hell? What the heck? The MIDI module doesn't have a MIDI... Well, I... <laughs> I soldered some wires from this port over to the back of the... Um, what the shit? What the heck? Yeah, to the back of my... There, this is the IntelliJ case. So, instead of having the MIDI cord have to be right in the middle of my case, it's a big cord. This is why you're... Yes. The person I talked to about this modular <laughs> stuff, because I would never. Yeah. I wouldn't even try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like afraid I'm gonna break it, but also I'd be like, I wouldn't even thought of doing that. I yeah, I mean once you understand how signals and connections and all these things work, it's just copper to copper is what I say. So if you just know how to get copper to copper, boom. Hey copper. Yeah, hey copper. <laughs> so it's a funny mod. Um but really, some of my patches will literally just have the mutant brain running into the assimilator. Mm -hmm. And the assimilator now is going to have a MIDI expander, which I think might change again a big way that I make music in modular because I might be doing way more drums on the assimilator. Oh, for, I'm definitely picking that up. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt. So that'll be really cool because, yeah. like, yeah, again, it's a must have. Yeah, the assimilator. It's one of the best sounding samplers I've ever heard. Best sounding sampler. It's, it's got an interesting workflow. Yeah. But it is the best sounding. It's got like yeah. 192. Sample yeah, rate. yeah. I think if 192,000, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It defaults to that. I think that if you compare it to like the Dig Attack, like you. you Four times? That's three, it, three and a half times? Or whatever. Yeah. It will, it'll make the Dig Attack just look like a pile of garbage. No, no, it's fine. They're both great. Oh, my God. Um, Sacrilege. But then when you compare it to something like an NPC or something like even just old samplers where it could slice, like it's slicing game is a little confusing. I hope they can improve yeah. that a little bit. But I still slice a lot on it and it is just tons of Oh, fun. yeah, yeah. It's totally doable. Yeah. But um, anyway, so Mutant Brain, uh, you could you could mod things. If you want to ever talk about that, just DM me and I could tell you how, how these things work. Um, but the assimilator is going to have an expander, which will be great because, again, like there's so much cool st stuff you could do with this. It's also going to allow this is a, gosh, we're just not even making music. We're just talking. But um, it's going to allow these because you get 24 CVNs. It's going to allow you to take those CVs and turn them into MIDI. So it's going to be a CV to MIDI converter. Oh, my God. Which is Kind of crazy. No, and also the, it's okay, it's good that we're talking because the yeah. point of this is to discuss modular because I really wanted people to see the inside of like somebody's yeah. brain yeah. who's using this kind of setup in uh as a regular setup for their live shows. Yeah. Every time I played a show with you, we played a lot of shows together, we've yeah. known each other for many years. Yeah. You always play with a live modular system. Yeah. And uh it's always like, you know, I have a lot of modular. I don't play live with the modular. I just play with modular at home. I yeah. sample it and stuff. So mm -hmm. I have a different workflow with modular than you. Yeah. So I'm very curious, like, what are you thinking yeah. when you design your sets? Because you're still like, I'll play a 30 to 45, 32 an hour set. Yeah. And you'll play a 32 an hour set yeah. on a single patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, <laughs> that's where this is like, what? You know, what the F is going on? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, what so the heck? I'm, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's great, yeah. Because I think it is important. And, and and I know a lot of people have different setups entirely. And that's the beautiful thing about modular is like if you ever are like um, worried about am I doing the right thing? The answer is yeah, you're always doing the right thing. Never worry about doing the wrong thing. You can't do the wrong thing in modular. Like, and I think that that's really great. Whereas I've seen people play things on Electron that's completely awful. They can do the wrong. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, on modular, it's just like as long as you're doing something, it's usually pretty compelling because it's so weird what you could get out of this. So yeah. anyway, right now what I'm doing is tuning the oscillator so we can actually uh, see what's going on here. So yeah, you can't see it and you won't be able to, but. Yeah. There's a beautiful little tuner screen right here. <laughs> yeah, and it because Nick, uh, Nick just hit the C2. Hit the C2. It was really easy to dial in with the assimilator. Um yeah, again, the 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 Adventure Kid pack is tuned to D in order to fit the number of samples very well. Got it. So okay. so then you have to tune it down to see if you're wanting everything to kind of be set up nicely okay all right also using a simulator as an oscillator is awesome maybe we'll do some sound design on that because uh the shapeshifter has disappointed me beyond belief but anyway so we get our simulator set with the pitch and then again you guys can't see this but this is pretty easy you just assign the cv to it so then it actually tracks your volt per octave so my last volt per octave that i was running into it um Let's see what happens. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna read this real quick. What is the best way to unpatch and repatch for a live set? I have the same case stacked. I'm trying to find the best method. Um, 
the best way to unpatch and repatch cables um if it's across two cases i have the same case stacked yeah is is uh early on i was talking about using these um octolinks and so it's like it will bus only eight signals across two cases and then the other thing is literally just having actually i've used stackables for the same way is that if you just leave a stackable patched in and you know you're going to patch into a stackable it creates that mnemonic a little bit better so on one case you just leave the, ca the cable hanging and then you patch it into the stackable and then maybe you unpatch the stackable okay um but there is sort of like different different ways but a lot of, you know it is going to be an issue like try to make it easy on yourself don't don't i've seen this too where people just are way too ambitious and then they stress themselves out too much playing live music should not be stressful i mean it is by by default it has to be but like i think that it's just like you want to make it as less stressful yeah the exactly. least amount of stress yes so anyway we got this patched up uh it's all tuned and so you know we had our baseline so let's hear our beat again because i've been talking for so long let's get that kick going you were saying you you do ducking here. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. Just we we could, don't need to go back into that. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I like to keep it a little bit light because then when I listen back to it, it kind of gets a little more ducky. But anyway, ducky. So so this is something fine. We have a little bit of motion going on right now from the uh, maestro. But other than that, everything is pretty static, and so that's okay. So let's let's use our assimilator voice and run it into where this used to be. So out one was going into um, over here. So. Uh, and the other bad thing, not bad thing about modular, but just like managing your patch cable length, like before buy mod band cables, buy mod band cables, they make 18 inch cables, which are actually kind of perfect. Anyway, they are uh, the perfect length. They are the perfect length. I, I, I will actually attest that. Um, what I'll do is like when I patch, I'll use all these long cables. And then before like halfway through the week, I will swap them out for the right size cables and I start making a bundle down the middle like a oh, braid okay. and that sort of helps me because right now with all this stuff around like it's kind of hard to reach in yeah, certain places like, can't really tell what's it's going messy on. by nature yeah and that's you'll... like a whole topic unto itself like how to set up your patch cables. yeah that would be a good one to have uh Christoph on the stream because he oh he's he, meticulous he, yes I see that and he has like like this German uh uh highway system going through his system you know I'm like it's beautiful <laughs> <A German system. laughs> okay so so now when I hit play, here's what, what I, what's going to happen. So the um, the marbles is going to be one of my generative pieces. And marbles is? It's a random sampler. It's a, actually, it says right there, a random sampler. So, but it has like quantized. Exactly. Stuff. So it has two, um, two, two things going on with it. It has a, a rhythm generating side and it has the sampled side. So the rhythm generation side is the one, when I hit play here, we're actually just going to have one note. So, but it's going to sort of randomly generate. So this rhythms. is kind of like marbles and modules like marbles are bread and butter for you, right? Yeah, exactly. That's like, I feel like that's where this is going to go is like, well, how do you keep this going? Exactly. You know, yeah. like, how do I keep this alive? And modules like marbles is how. It is how, exactly. Because yeah. And we could lock it in and have it repeat. But anyway, so, so let's, uh, I'm going to, we get this going. Now, when I turn this knob here, this is my bias knob for my, for my T, which is my, my rhythm. If I start turning this over, okay, you can kind of hear it. So, um, is it this one? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then we get. Okay, so this is cool. We're not using the half packs at all for this. In fact, let's let's just simplify and just listen to this as it by itself, right? Where's that other sound coming from? It's a little bit of bleed, okay. I think. From no, case. no, no. It's my channel 10. What did I have with my it's channel 10? Like oh, I had. It is bleed. Oh, oh, it's 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 um it's okay. It's my quad VCA. So we'll just we won't worry about that. That was something that we were gonna do before the shapeshifter crapped out okay, on us. Got it, got it. Okay. So marbles is very very cool because what's happening. This at 50% means that the note is going to hit 50% of the time. So it's oh, just okay. going to be like kind of creating these kind of semi random. It's, it's like pretty full. Yep. But exactly. Not and if overwhelming. We, if we turn it all the way to the left, it's going to be 100% of the time. Ooh. Yep. So, so this is randomly seating. Now, what I can do is I can actually lock the rhythm. So if I hold this, if this is 
green oh, and at noon. Okay. Now you can hear doom 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 and it's it's gonna stay like that until I unlock it. I like I, the locked one. It sounds good. Yeah, and you could change the the the, the length too. So if we. Good little marbles tutorial yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. And then it's run through this effect here. Which one? Right over here. Tape delay. Yep. The tip top effects sound pretty damn good. They're very nice. And then, like I said, like I like to play around with my envelopes and my envelopes over here. See what's my response set out here? That's that right. It's a little plucky. Okay. So we'll filter a little bit. Turn you up a little. Okay. <laughs> so cut this down a little bit. Okay. So it's cool because you could lock it. You could change the length of these. But it also will generate quantized notes. And so, yes, that's the next thing. So on my right hand side, I have my bias knob. So my bias knob allows me to introduce that offset. So that's why when we first heard it, it was down here. It sounds pretty good. And so. It has scales? Or yes, yep, yep. So, so right now with my bias, I have the step set all the way to the right, which means that I'm just gonna get octaves. And I'm set to this green mode, which means I get five octaves. So right now, if I want to turn this over here, I'll get um, an actual we'll do it. So it's. Oh, that's cool. Yep. So you can hear that it's like. Don't you wish you could just record all your knob movements? Hey, guess what? We can. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. So, so let's oh, try you that. Get the, you get the one. Hello. <laughs> Oops. We're on the one, baby. So let's go back to, uh, there we go. Oh no, what do I keep on hitting? Hit off, hit the button on. below the red one. Oh no, all right, I'll let you do it. <laughs> I mean, this sounds pretty cool. And then I would like, you know, again, we could start bringing in that hi-hat. And then if we want to, Again, draw on our automation, let's do that. So we're on page two, and I could patch in Tobias. So right there, Tobias, you know, like from- <laughs> <laughs> Patch into Tobias? <laughs> <laughs> the never nude? To, yeah, the, the never nude Tobias. <laughs> okay. So at the end here, I didn't even see it, but it jumps way up. Now I feel like we're getting closer to what I expect from yeah. you. Yeah. You know? So oh, now, I, I think, I mean, I would like it yeah. if you introduce some of your samples. I really don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we, the we'll, we, we could, <laughs> we could try. Let's, 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 let's see if we get there. Because okay, I think okay. we got some. Now that we don't use the verb, I can. I think we can do some really freaky sound design stuff with this. So, again, I didn't use the hat packs for this, but now we have like this melody. Just, just we'll see what happens when we introduce the other bass line. It may sound bad. Does not sound bad. <laughs> So, yeah, because now it's we're kind of like in E flat. If I want to actually have them both move down, if I hit this, I'll, I, I'll have to bring the bias down. So it's, there you go. See, pretty nice, right? Oh, I'm totally <laughs> digging this. Yeah, and we've been doing this from scratch. Yep, which is cool. Yep. So anyway. <laughs> So now the other thing we can do, we have this going and would say we haven't played with the spread because right now we are just changing the bias with a chord. So we're still kind of sequencing, but the spread is how we get true randomness. And so what, so let's do this where again, we'll use our uh, maestro. And if I want it to kind of be the original sequence, but near the end of the bar, 
get more spread out. I'm actually gonna attenuate it. Um, Cause I'll show you what, what happens if I don't attenuate it first, so. And when Nick says use his maestro, he means use a, his LFO. Yep. So. So it's like, it's just gonna be end, end up being completely random, which to me makes me feel sort of like less engaged. You know, it's, it's just random. Like that doesn't, that's not so much fun to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we want some repetition. Exactly, yep. So we, one, we could slow it down some. But yeah, it keeps on going up to those high notes. So let's attenuate it. So attenuating means we just rein it in. I don't have an attenuator on my marble, so I'm gonna use my quad quadrat. So, and the cool side effects here too is that I actually, oops, haha, <laughs> I really am not good at patching. Um, the side effect is now I actually have a control for that spread. So if I, if I want this original thing going and it sounds cool, cool. But if I wanna bring it to the forefront, I can maybe open up my filter. Uh, I guess my filter's already pretty open. Turn this up. Yep, so so it's subtle. Like, it's like kind of, but you, you can notice that near the end of that bar, you hear that like it starts going quite a bit higher because we're driving the spread a little bit harder off of my maestro. And if, even if we, well, we won't lock it because we already are kind of doing some some randomization stuff there. Um, another sort of fun thing to do too is, see, like you could kind of do like acidy slides if you pull the oh. step out that way. So, so you could you could kind of, see yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So let's see. You could CV it from the hatbacks and have it on a, on the step sequencer and have it be a part of your sequencer. Exactly, yep. Yeah. So yeah, all you need to do is like take that step and draw it back. So again, well, we'll do the same sort of trick, but this time we'll, I want a, what I want, how do I want to do this? I want to generate, like a slow clock somewhere. Where do I have a slower clock? Hmm. Yeah, we can. We could just. Um, actually, here's what I do. So you could just use the clock, one of the channels from here, and. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So here's what we'll do: is um, we'll take our channel three and make it a square. This is what you were saying earlier. That this yeah. Is kind of your. Exactly. Your we get a butter. square, and then we take it and we slow it down. Okay, so now you can see channel three here. You might not be able to see that on the screen, but it's creating a clock. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that clock and hit an envelope. And that envelope is then gonna introduce a slide. So we're gonna just get these sort of like slides, but it's gonna be quick and in time. So we'll see if, we'll see if we're in successful. We're gonna have to invert it because steps is a left knob turn. Yep. <laughs> so let's see here, take that. Set it to invert. So let's see if this works. You can okay. kind of hear it there. Real quick, can we, let's pause the music for one second. Mm -hmm. Just for folks who like don't know modular very well, um, I'll let, I'll let you describe this. But yeah. like, why did you have to invert the signal to turn the knob? Yeah. The other direction. Exactly. So I'm gonna go. Um, yeah, I keep on hitting the wrong I, thing. This I, is a, yeah, yeah it's okay. all right. I get it now. I'm having you run two pants, <laughs> run, run the whole gig. So, so well, let's look at this knob here. So if I send control voltage into, these aren't control, like a uh, voltage controlled per se, but when I run control voltage into something, if it doesn't have an attenuator, then what happens is if I run like a envelope that just goes up and down, what happens is this, it, when it goes up, it turn, it always turns your value to the right. Right. clockwise. So full voltage is going to crank it all the way up and then go back down to the original value. And so how do you make it turn left? You need to invert the signal. You have to send negative voltage in. So, you know, let's assume that it's at noon and we send a negative signal, it will turn your knob left and then revert it back to middle. And so 
Yeah, you need these utilities you in order. You need to, these utilities. You need these utilities to do things like this. This is so important. This information right here is yeah. like essential yeah. stuff to doing modular at all. Yeah, exactly. And like a lot of people like will neglect to have attenuators and then they'll have modules without attenuverters, which means like this module here, my my ultra kick. Well, let me move my hand so you can see it. There's no attenuverters on that thing. You can see it and it's all inputs and they do that to save space. And um, I don't think that that is like, like good for beginners to like really understand sometimes. What, just attenuators? Or, or things without attenuators. Cause oh, yeah, they'll, yeah, yeah. they'll send LFOs into here and then realize this thing is like, this thing doesn't sound good. And it's like, cause you cause need there's to. there's no attenuation. Cause there's no attenuation. Absolutely. You yeah, want yeah. to dial it in. You're totally right. Yeah. And so again, that, that ex explanation about like how, why we need why I have a lot of these utilities that just really like mod, like, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody said the ST modular makes a great zero HP attenuator. So, so like, do you, you know that video? I think Myler Melodies made is like why you need a VCR. I don't, yeah, I remember yeah, the title yeah, 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 it's exactly. a super popular yep. video. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like kind of what he was getting at with like, why you need a VCA is kind of really, he was saying like, why you need attenuators. Yeah. And attenuverters, right? Oh, yeah, like totally. He was using VCAs to do all sorts of, like, volume ducking and stuff. But, like, you could do that with a, ten, you know, buffered yeah. attenuator. Exactly. Or, uh, yeah, or with just with an attenuator. Or just with an attenuator. Yeah, you don't need a VCA, yeah. per se, but VCAs will do attenuation. Yeah, I mean, in a pinch, well. I'll use a VCA as an attenuator. Because yeah. VCAs, again, a lot of these terms are synonymous. VCAs are volume attenuation. Even though it's called an amplifier, it just, like... You know, some gets, of them don't amplify. Some of them don't amplify. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, but yeah, to be able to invert is, yeah, exactly. Entire world of Quadrax. Quadrax also has some funny ways to attenuate signal coming in. I I personally will still prefer an attenuator outside of it. But, okay. Um, but there are certain modules that have like digital methods of attenuation. I believe that the Maestro actually has a digital way to attenuate signals coming out of it as well. Okay. I will still prefer to use knobs because what I see is what I get and I don't like to have things hidden behind menus if I can. Okay. The assimilator has to hide everything around a menu because because it's too because it, it has to. Yeah. Just... But um but anyway, so yeah that was just like a brief explanation about, you know, this thing where we wanted to essentially on this module here I wanted to turn the knob left. So you saw that I had to use three patch cables and three modules just to introduce slides. And you're <laughs> like, why would you spend all that money and time and all those things just a slide when you could get a TBO3 and program in a friggin' slide. And the answer is because I want to be able to have that thought process when I'm playing. Like, I don't need slides all the time. And so, like, I want to be able to have that, um, have that ability on, on my modular. Yeah, you case. have that on deck, but it doesn't mean that you're... Yeah, exactly. You know, that That's going to be used. Yeah, it would be interesting to see, like, a... Um, like all modular users, how much very like after because you know I've been doing this I can't remember how many years at least six or seven years now, um, how many of my patches are truly unique? You know, like you know I think I have all That's this choice, yeah, but yeah. I probably am just doing the same friggin' thing over and over again. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like I think uh, yeah, probably like some like you have to do some of the same yeah. patches. Like you have yeah. to, otherwise yeah, this yeah is exactly. Like, what yeah. are you gonna be doing? About yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta send CV and gate. Yeah, it's like. I guess when it comes to like learning new techniques and stuff, that's what all the new modules are about. And that's kind of what makes modular exciting. Yep. It's because there is always something new or a new way to like look at something or this one does, you know, buffered molt and attenuators in the one module. So you can do that patch in. You can do what we're doing here with the quadrat if people can see that. But yeah, but it's built into a single module or something. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. That part's cool. Okay. So let's hit play again and hear what we got. See if the so that slide you could kind of yeah you heard the slide there boom how uh, do you change your patch much live the answer is no I have diluted myself into thinking I'll bring patch cables cables patch cables onto my um sort of desk what I'm, or the table I'm playing on thinking if if the inspiration strikes me I will patch live the inspiration has never struck me the only thing that strikes me is absolute fear. <laughs> and I just don't want this thing to like uh, go so. You don't want this to happen. I don't want this to happen, please. I mean, I get home. I bet you the thing's fine. I, it feels warm. It feels Maybe really it's warm. Too much voltage. Yeah, yeah. Too many hot freaking jams, you know. Too many and, hot jams. And if we want this to. Nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, anyway, so we got this sort of thing going on. And the other nice thing is since this is our, our sort of um, our marbles, we get to play with the, the bias. The bias knob, which then allows us to change the, that sort of the, the, the rhythmic pattern. Oh, that's cool. Yep. So this makes for a lot of improv. So this yep. is how. Yep. You're like this right here is like the really marbles enables you. Yep. You'd have to find something to replace marbles. Yep. Maybe with several modules. Oops. <laughs> that can happen live, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it's sort of hard. Again, like that's kind of why. And we've, you know, we kind of talk about this a little bit because, like, you know, that can happen live, and that's okay. You know, you'll just see me go like this. Like, I'll play that. And I'll, you know, <laughs> but but the the thing about that is, you know, again, talking about attenuators and attenuverters. If I want to figure out where to put this knob here, like I can use attenuation. Set a min max. Set a min max. So in the heat of the moment when I'm playing, I don't have to reach into this knob and be like, okay, I need to hit it right there, or else it's gonna sound like shit, you know? Yeah. Like I can turn this knob, and then when I hit it all the way to the max, then it's on. Like it sounds good. It's gonna be perfect. And so there are certain things, especially like when I'm doing like sample scrubbing, like if I'm playing random parts of a sample, I want to make sure that I set that min max for me because I don't want to just like oh, have to dial it in or, you know, so managing your voltage, I think is like one of the key ways to allow yourself. Mordax data moment. Exactly. The Mordax data. Telescope moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there is a mode on the Mordax data that literally lets you see what the precise voltages are. So if you wanted to be a freak like me, you can actually figure out where Don't those. Don't you wish your girlfriend <laughs> was a freak like me? Don't you wish that your uh, girlfriend was a freak like me? Um, and like I haven't dove, dove into this. I had some um, curiosities about it, but the um, the Control Forge by Rossum also is a modulation source, programmable modulation source where you can say, I want 3.04 volts because I know that's what I want. And I want, you know, like that one, you could actually be like surgical about your modulation. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. go that crazy. Cause again, like, yeah, as Phaserville says, like we want happy accidents. We don't <laughs> want, if we have everything kind of predetermined then maybe everything becomes <laughs> phaserville phaserville <laughs> home to superman's narch narch <laughs> narch, narch, narch nemesis. okay so so anyway so we have you know this this going on which again like is pretty fun and like i said like i'd probably you know again like when i'm actually playing at home with the hat packs i still like to use a keyboard like there are keyboard modes on here but i still feel at home just playing on a keyboard to write my bass lines. Yeah, yeah, I got a key step sitting in front of my module. Yeah, That's... it's super easy, because again, like it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. No, like uh, have, uh, user friendly sound said, uh, hides nerd chic. Like I, I just got the, the polyend tracker and just like, it is like, you know, I, I have to resist that urge to use a keyboard and, or, you know, the keyboard on there and actually try to do the tracker yeah, thing. in the notes. And yeah. that is a fun workflow too. It's just that whenever I do that, I. I don't know, again, like I, I like to be able to play and feel the music a little bit more too. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, but I, again, because I had an M8 tracker, I loved it, but everything I made, I got stuck at a block where I wasn't making music that I kind of liked, you know? Yeah. And that's why I actually do like this thing with marbles, because again, like it's a pretty cool well, sound and bass line. It, it assists you yeah. in starting, a tr starting your music. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah, actually, anyway, so, so that's all cool. Um, how much time do we have? So it's three forty eight. Okay, yeah. cool. So so not let's just do done. was that not done until it's done. Okay. So so now I wanna have some we have like stuff that's pretty low down. I um is there a way I could pump my So also is that really my that is The Platts hi hat sometimes can be kind of fin finicky. Because the uh, changes, oh, that's why. Because I'm going through the harmonics. I messed up the whole time. That's what you wanted. That's what I wanted. Overshot. So you could like bring those hats up, take your kick out, yep. introduce a new sound. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And then again, like the nice thing about that marble is if I don't. You can hear it being modulated now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, again, like marbles is really just so awesome. <laughs> it's just like, I think Chris Barth just got a marbles too. And he's just like, this thing is, you could just play sets with it. And you really can, you know, again with that, we had like a little bit of that spread, but. And I think that's going through effect too. Was, was it this one down here? Again, like we have this rhythm going with doo -doom, doo -doom. if I hit this T off. Yeah, one thing that I would do, and again, like I think what we would, I don't really have a free molt. Well, I have a free molt, but the transposition off the bias would be kind of nice. Cause again, like with this being randomly generated, like if I, the, uh, I had this on track nine where it goes from a C to an E flat. Like then I want to transpose my marbles thing also to an E flat. So I could literally just add the voltage there and like have my marbles transpose up and down too. Sometimes I do yeah. have like system set up like that again, just for improvising and just have. Yeah, because like, you want to have it to be perfect. Yeah, and people really kind of I think people enjoy hearing things interact in that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, like so. oh, everything goes up at the same time. Amazing, you know? Um, but okay, so we use marbles one side to create melodic stuff, but we still have some free modulation here. And we still have like things like tides in my random step. So what I want to do is... Let's dump, like, just to, just for people that are watching, let's yeah. dump it down to like, we, we keep saying the names of these modules. Me and Nick are very oh, okay, familiar yeah. with this stuff, yeah. so it's so easy for us. Mm -hmm. But Marbles is a random, it's a sample it's and just, hold. Yeah, we'll just call it a random generator. It's just, yeah, ran so I'm using my, you're using your random generator, mm -hmm. and now... Yeah, and there's free, like, so when we look at it, it's just the module has a lot more outputs on it, and let's, let's do some other weird stuff with the outputs. Okay. And so, what I have been enjoying, and we're, we're gonna create a just this is like an all effects path so again this is sort of like a fun modular trick um but what i'm gonna do is use herb verb going into beads going into mimeophone oh with no sound source oh so, so feedback patch. yeah well and and it's the, the feedback just comes straight from herb verb herb verb self-resonating is like I don't know. It, do they even make herb verb anymore? They do. They still do. They haven't come out with a replacement for, like, I wish they would because it does do some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's mono in. So mono just, in stereo out. At least it's stereo out. At least it's stereo out, and the stereo out sounds really good. So you use that as a send effect with something like the performance mixer. Yeah, yeah. It's and, and it sounds really good. Like I, it's it's a weird one. Just like all make noise things. Like I wouldn't say like, oh well, mimeophone's a good delay, but would you use it as your main delay? Like it's really massive for yeah it's um, a big delay to have just be a standard delay yeah and same thing with herb verb where i'm just like yeah. herb verb is like a little too weird of a reverb to kind of make as my own as my main reverb you know oh yeah for sure so anyway so let's see what weirdness we could do here so like again we have our kick snare hi-hat we have two synth voices and now what i want to do is introduce like a sound that's going to be like none other something that nobody's ever heard before no it's just like um maybe something that's gonna we'll see herb verb like the thing that may not be good i wish i had like a stereo filter because we may be introducing a lot of low end like uh, sounds with our verb and it might be muddying up the low end of the mix, but we'll play around with it and see what happens. So this for this part, we'll just start. We may we won't even run our sequence, or maybe we, once we get a sound. But so so again, our verb is my. Um, let's switch over to this camera here. Boop. Okay, so our verb is my reverb. Beads is my granular processor, and mimeophone is my delay unit. Um, the what is the constant sub? Oh, you know what the constant sub is? It's my ultra kick. <laughs> well, I couldn't hear it on these headphones, but the ultra kick, if I don't pull down that resonance, 
if you look at your mixer, it is a lot of subs. So for the viewers out there with listening on the sub, I'm 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 really sorry. Um, <laughs> or really, they're really lucky. They're they're lucky. <laughs> they're lucky, lucky. They're so lucky. Um, anyway, so Herb Verb is make noises um, reverb unit, and it can self resonate. So here's what it sounds like when it self resonates. Let's see. Which is cool, right? Like that's already like a great point too. I saw Ryan from Acid Rain do something one time on this. Oh, on I don't the... know if you know what I'm talking about. Uh uh Yeah, but I know he loves the reverb because like one of the first times I talked to him. So what I'm gonna do is just like we'll just start designing this part of the um, the sort of sound design. So this is like a drone. This will be a drone, and what I want to do is again like w while we're making all these things, we're just thinking about, we're just condensing everything to like, let's try to create like a generative four bar loop essentially. Okay. And so, so again, taking off Maestro, we're gonna set it slow, eight ramp up. So we'll have our kick, we'll make our kick kind of, Oop. and then again, here's the one downside to this generative patch. Um, I just have to make sure I turn my bias down if I don't want to hear that one part, so. So we'll just wait for this to hopefully crest. Okay, may not. I know that we actually might do with a little bit of boost. So you can kind of hear that was getting Yeah, I there. heard it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So that's kind of nice already, right? And each time it's getting a little bit more aggressive, so I'll dial it back. And so we'll do maybe four bars. So now. User friendly is in the chat here. You, if, I don't know if you've seen user friendly stuff, but this is definitely up. Oh yeah, up there, alley. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, and so like <laughs> one thing that I like to do too is just pulse that um pulse the mix with an LFO. So like I don't know. It, it I think this is like an underrated use. Isn't that cool? That is cool. <laughs> so you get this. That's yeah, very like creepy. Yeah, and we could change again, like um, we can adjust the pitch. We could adjust the pitch. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> that's cool. And so um, we could change. So stages is the thing that's being like um, that's creating that pulsing, and again, we'll just. Um, kind of run random control voltage into that. So we're actually, we'll just take this tides and see what happens. It's kind of cool, right? Yeah. It's not dialed in, but we'll just let it kind of go kind of crazy. Oh, yeah. I dig that. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm excited for when it all goes and coalesces yeah. together again. Yeah, for sure. Cause then we, I mean, we also have our, so like, let me think about this. Cause I, I like I'm trying to figure out how we could when when it does coalesce like we kind of want maybe a little bit of beads to also kind of go a little crazy too, and this is where let's just not be intentional let's just start patching random shit into random other shit right. So that that extra kind of sounds coming from beads, kind of resynthesizing. This is pretty cool. Oh, this is yeah. dope. <laughs> yeah. These are kind of the sounds that I expect from modular. Yeah. But a lot of times, this will just go off the rails. Yeah. And I'm, then I'm like, please. Please, yeah. Please relax a little bit for a second. <laughs> but I really like, this is great ambiance. Yeah. Totally. We start mixing like a real, a whole other set of sounds. This is going to be really cool. And so now we're using a mimeophone to add a bit of sort of a bit of delay there. And then we'll play around with um, a little bit of the zone. And, and this is where I just go freaking crazy because then literally mimeophone just loves to just have random things shoved in it <laughs> to like <laughs> like right now so now some of that sample is kind of being flipped a little bit 
And you can't really hear it so much. Let's see. And I wonder if we can sneak a sample in there. Very, very sneaky, sir. Let's see if we can find, eh, I don't know. The issue with the simulator, which isn't that big of an issue, but the pull samples from other samples banks is a little bit arduous, so. Yeah. But it's so cool. Like, I think that this, you know, once we actually start getting that hi-hat back in there. Yeah, here we go. And so I'm gonna hit stop so everything resynchronizes too. Cause when I was, uh, one thing when I'm like programming the maestro, if I'm doing that before I send a reset, then everything's gonna be kind of unsynchronized, which yeah. is which is okay. I mean, that'll happen if you're live programming on yes. any groove box too. Exactly. So now I want the the buildup of my hi-hat to kind of coincide with the herb burb being kind of creepy, you know? So. John Slater says the only thing that can replace marbles is a TBO3. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, now this is really cool because, like, now we have something that just, like, sounds really sort of crazy. Super attenuated. So we could we could try that. We can uh, try to send that kick into the airverb super attenuated. <laughs> yeah, that sounds crazy. Let's go. Let's keep this going. from the kick. Yep. And the reverb, yeah, again, like it's, you could really play around with the, playing around with that size. Again, we'll see, I actually don't have anything patched in there, but I do have another extra random voltage here. And of course, like, the kind of issue with trying to do this live is managing my levels, you know? Yeah. I like the levels right now. I think yeah. this is great. I feel like this is like this, like, you would have built into this, and yeah. then this droning stuff would sort of start fading away. Yep. And then you'd be left with this, like, Yeah. Because then we could get more notes going. kick is compressing a little too much so we gotta
so this would be like a really nice part to like, if I had more patterns sort of programmed, we could start introducing maybe another melodic pattern. If I had a, some samples loaded in. But, but the nice thing is again, I love the, this kind of sound patch we did here. We have so much ability to kind of play around with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. It sounds so demonic, you know? It does. So the, that bass line, we could introduce more notes. And then we could put the drone in. You know, the drone's forever droning. Mimi a phone. So again, I always like to run my hi-hats through something like that delay, because it just get... Wait, because you can also like make a new pattern yeah, on the fly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, here we go. I am used to hearing like a lot of vocal samples yeah. and stuff in your music, which we don't have currently yeah. right now. But the setup for that is a yeah. lot of work. Next time we'll do that. Yeah. Sick. Oh, <laughs> sick transition. Nice. So yeah, again, that's why I like plats so much because again, like you can, you can bring it all the way down there. Yeah. And it, and it playing it plays really nice with that tape delay because if anything, I wish. It, well, let's see. I can boost my 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 snare a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> everything out and just let the verb take over. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because right now also it's kind of set to sh do a bit of shimmering. The shimmering is really cool. Yeah, but you can see what I'm saying where it's just like, and actually I think we could probably out. Yeah, because that at low ends, it has a tilt knob there. These are definitely the sounds that are harder to make in Groovebox world. Yeah, for sure. Ha <laughs> ha. 
right. I think I, put, I, I nudged the cable because we're off beat now somehow. Oh, maybe we aren't. I think it's just to, you're, you're playing in polymeters and it's just. Yeah. No, it's, 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 messing, it's on the clock. It's messing everybody's head up, baby. Let's go. So it's, and then, again, another underrated sort of touch point is how much of that envelope strike in your filter. Because now it's like pretty low key. I like it low key. Yeah. I think that's cool to have that kind of just like coming in and out. Yeah. Definitely adds like stuff because it's pretty random and like your stuff has to be random because yep. we have to have this go for 30 to minutes to an hour. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. I think that that's about where we'll land here. Yeah, yeah. Taking it in for a landing. Yeah, <laughs> this was really great. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah let's. We're we're calling it. We're calling it right now. We're calling it right let's, now. Uh, let's hit one really quick on right. that on the number here. All right. So this is Nick Bigelow, aka oh, DJ okay. Weak Acid, who came into my studio here to show you. Mm -hmm. and me yeah because there's lots for me to learn from nick uh, always has been how he does his live modular setup and we went super deep yeah yeah for, <laughs> we went sure. super deep for like two hours long mm -hmm. um is there any like closing statement you would if we were to say how to you how do you live modular how do you play a live set what would you leave people with yeah i would say just try to figure out where your touch points are like your modular like the reason why we like modular is because we like all the knobs and so when you're playing you really want to be able to have those sort of like touch points on your system like to actually reach out and play the filter figure out just like when you're playing it's okay to jam on the same pattern but you, you should know at least two or three knobs that you use to augment the sound to push the sound and to transition like like a lot of the things i use to transition are just to make the sounds longer so envelopes uh things like um you know, the, the decay on the herb verb, uh, hi-hat decays, stuff like that, you know? And so, like, playing around with those things, you'll just find yourself being able to push the sound more and more and more. And when I'm in the groove, in a groove box or in a DAW, like, it's hard for me to find those knobs because yeah. you either have to pre-program them, electron or box, don't exist. or they don't exist. Yeah. And so if you just play around with that, then your jams end up becoming kind of compelling. And then the next step is figuring out how you can automate those things. And don't just stop there. Once you start automating, put your automation behind a knob too so you can introduce and pull away that automation. And so hopefully what you have is just something that you can just be as um, sort of, you know, you're going to be nervous when you play. So you want to have something that's as easy as possible just to jam. Don't make it too hard on yourself, you know? <laughs> well, you literally did this like live crazy feedback patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not something you would do. You would have pre patched, of course. You would yes. Do it live. Yeah, I wouldn't so do it live. That. But I, I usually, when I, because I do this, like, because I do some modular lessons too. And what I'll do is I'll just talk through my process. Like, you'll, you heard me say, okay, well, you know, the high end sort of type there so where do i repatch it into something else or do i find a way to augment the module or the module itself and then i play it i test it see how it sounds and then i say is it good is it bad you know and a lot of times this would be like one of the more successful like jams because there will be times where i set all this up and i just get frustrated and you, like it and you unpatch. unpatch it which is kind of you know i would suggest against that like i have a mixer that has an sd card you should just at least record a little bit of those patches because you'll go back to them and you'll say oh I really like what I did there and I can't believe I didn't like it in the moment. Just because you didn't make what you thought you wanted to make at the moment doesn't mean that it's not worth anything. So record. So record. Record. And then, yeah, like, you know, I've been um, more into, again, sampling. Like, because you might have a nice groove. Sometimes I'll get, like, a really complex patch just to make a simple groove, sample it, and then just play that groove as the background so then you have more... It's, it's what you do with like trackers, it's what you do with DAWs. You render, like you work on yeah, something, yeah, yeah. you render, you fold it down, you play it back. Right, and that right, right. should be a so process. You get more out of your tracks. Yeah. yeah, that can be a very, very important process that you do in modular too. And so like, don't discount that. And don't ever think anything's cheating or not cheating. You're yeah, not doing things wrong. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no cheating. No, cheating but, would just be playing a recording. That's, yeah. That'd be cheating. That'd be if cheating. Somebody's hoping to see you play your modular system. Yeah, yeah. You come with a little iPad, cheap. just like, burp, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Your track one. We got eight tracks. <laughs> so wait, you said you give modular lessons? I do give modular it's lessons. Like, how, if people wanted those, how would they, how would um, they find those? Yeah, so you could find me on Instagram, Nick Bigelow with two Ws. 
uh, just DM me. I do um, at Patchwork. So if you're in town and you want to sort of like, um, if you want to have some do, IRL, yeah, I do. I also do house calls or you know, or do, have done them over Zoom too during the pandemic. So I do lessons from time to time. It's more if you're lucky enough to get Nick to do lessons <laughs> with you. You are very lucky. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Like again, like I, right now I have a student and we're working mostly on my system, and he uh, they'll bring some uh side modular to kind of play around with i've had people like literally just like i'll patch the like they'll have it on a camera and i'll be like okay patch here and there and and it but it's all fun and i i think half of it is also just synth therapy like you might have noticed we did more talking than we did patching maybe um and i think that's really important you know well it's hard to find people that are as dedicated yeah as you are to modular so it's like you know how do you have a conversation about it with other people who aren't as that don't do it as much. You literally do modular basically for a living. Yeah, for sure. So to speak, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's true. Mm-hmm. And you you have for a long time. So yeah. you're a great person to talk to about it and not yeah. just listen to. Yeah. Again, like... I what appreciate we're... it very much. Yeah. Again, the modular world, it has mostly been online. And then to have somebody be like, oh, yeah, don't feel guilty about not using all the functionality is, like, kind of, like revolutionary sometimes like yeah, you yeah. have to have somebody just like literally tell you or that. watch people watch you make a mistake or yeah. watch a module a module fail fail yeah which yeah. i you know again i hope which that sucks yeah. no no i'll be I'm okay, sorry. No, I'll be okay. You'll, just, but, you'll just pay uh, me afterwards right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah so maybe maybe you're lucky enough to get lessons from nick but besides that you should check out his instagram he's also a fantastic visual artist mm-hmm. with uh, allotrope ijk mm-hmm. uh collaborates with uh chris barth yeah. uh from braya media as well and yeah. uh Thanks for coming on. Yeah, there's a new there's an event. I think it's October 20th at the Steam Plant that Modular Seattle is putting on, and I'm doing visuals for that. So if you haven't seen the um, the Steam Plant here in Seattle, it's, it looks like an incredible venue. It should be a lot of fun. Cool. And I'll be doing visuals as well as two other visuals. Yeah, come check out Nick's visuals. He's it's as good at that too as he is at Modular. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a he's great at this stuff. So, but yeah, thanks for coming on the show, dude. Yeah, thanks for having You're me. You're awesome. Yes. All right, folks, that's going to be it for us. Um, let me see. Uh, can I go to my... I can't see. Oh, yeah, we're good. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on. I hope you enjoyed this live stream, and I'll see you next week with probably some Electron stuff. <laughs> Maybe not. We'll see. It might be push three. Bye. <laughs>